Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we are going to learn how can we use Firebase authentication to have different users in our application with different types of roles. So this is also known as role-based access control. With this way of handling authorization in our application we can have for example an administrative user which is capable of editing the data of the application and we can have other normal student users that can only read the data. So how does this work? If we go back here to our Firebase authentication emulator that we have here running in our local emulator, we're going to see that we have here a series of users. To each user we have a unique user identifier. Now let's have a look at one of these two users here, the Angular University user. If we click here on edit user, we are going to notice that besides the name of the user and the user profile, we also have here something called custom claims. And we can see here that this is a plain JSON object with an admin property set to the value true. This mechanism, the custom claims mechanism, is how Firebase authentication supports role-based access control. So how does this work? What is a custom claim? Well, first of all, what are we claiming here? In this case, we are claiming that the user is an administrator. As you know, a JSON Web Token is going to be produced by Firebase Authentication when the user logs in to the application. The user is going to get back a JSON Web Token containing the unique user identifier, but also embedded in the JSON Web Token, we are going to have the custom claims object. So the custom claims that we see here that is available at the level of the Firebase Authentication database is going to be included in the JSON Web Token that is signed by the Firebase Authentication servers and sent back to the authenticated user. The typical use of custom claims is for this role-based access control use case, but you could add here on this JSON payload any claim that you want. This JSON object can have any structure that you want. It does not have uh, to be just uh, Boolean properties. You can add here any valid property for a JSON object. The content of this object that asserts something about the bearer of the token is then going to be included in the JSON Web Token and sent back to the browser where the user is using your application. In our application, we are going to be able to use the content of our custom claim embedded in our JSON Web Token in order to decide, for example, if we want to show or hide certain parts of the user interface to the user, such as, for example, this Add Course button or the Delete and Edit Course buttons that should only be visible to administrators. More than the user interface part, which does not implement the actual security of our data, the JSON Web Token from Firebase Authentication is going to be included into any request that we send back to our Firestore server. So whenever we edit the data or even when we retrieve some data from the Firestore database, we are going to be sending back to the Firestore database server a request. That request is going to have included in it our Firebase Authentication JSON Web Token containing not only the user identifier, which allows us to write Firestore security rules such as, for example, this one, asserting that the user is authenticated, but that JSON Web Token that is arriving at the Firestore database server is also going to contain the custom claims. So that JSON Web Token is going to allow us to determine at the level of the Firestore server if the user is an administrator or not. As you can see, this custom claims mechanism is really the basis of our role-based access control implementation. Now, you might be wondering how did this user in the Firebase Authentication database ended up having this custom claim? Well, the custom claim has to be set using a node process. You cannot set this via the console or from the front end. You are going to need a Firebase cloud function or a node process running in your machine. So that is why later on in the course we are going to learn how to set custom claims. Right now we already have here a series of users that have some custom claims set up for test purposes. So let's then see how can we use these users in order to implement and test our role-based access control functionality. So now we are here at our Firestore security rules. We are going to imagine that we have an incoming database modification request, such as for example, we are trying to write here to the courses collection. 
Now here, the courses, we want to make this only editable by admin users. So we are going to need to add here next to is authenticated a new function. This function is going to be called is admin. The first thing that we want to assert in is admin is to make sure that the user is correctly authenticated. So let's go ahead and let's add here a call to is authenticated. And now the second thing that we want to assert is that the user has the admin role. For that, we're going to need access to the custom claims in the JSON web token. We can access the custom claims by using the request object. From there, we need the of property. So this contains everything related to the JSON web token. And from here, we need to access the token property. So this token property is going to contain all our custom claims. Now, in order to implement is admin, the first thing that we want to make sure is that the token property containing the custom claims contains the admin property. So if the admin property is not present, then we are sure that the user is not an administrator. So let's go ahead and let's test here for the presence of the admin property in the token object. Now, besides asserting that the admin property is present, we also want to make sure that this property is set to true. So we can access the property in the following way. Let's access the token object containing our custom claims. And now we can access the admin property and we can make sure that this is true. So only if these three things are true, then the user is going to be considered an administrator by our Firestore security rules. And with this, we have finished the implementation of the isAdmin function. So let's go ahead and let's use it here. So here in the right permission of the courses collection, let's change isAuthenticated to isAdmin. Now, before trying this out, notice one thing. We are here adding the condition that this needs to be a valid course and that the user must be an admin. The problem is that this would not work for delete requests because with a delete request, we don't have a valid course as part of the request body. So we are going to need to split this up. We are going to add here the create and update permissions. So these are the ones that we want to make sure that contain a valid course in the body and that user is an administrator user. And we're going to separate here the delete condition. So we are going to allow deletion only if the user is an admin. So we are not including here the is valid course condition that would make the delete request fail. Okay, so now we are ready to try out this new logic. We are going to switch here to a larger window and make sure that you are logged out. So we can see here this message that denies access to unknown users. We are going to, in the future, learn how to redirect the user to the login page in case that it's logged out in order to avoid this error message. We are going to be using an authentication guard for it. But right now, let's go ahead and let's log in with an administrator to make sure that everything is still working for admin users. Let's take this user here, which we know is an admin user. So now we are signed in, we are redirected here to the courses page and let's go ahead and let's try to do here a delete request. I'm going to scroll down and let's say that I want to delete this course here. I'm going to click delete, the request goes through and the page gets refreshed. So if I scroll down, the course is no longer here. I'm going to try to delete here a new course. Everything is working correctly and let's go ahead and let's edit here one of the titles. I'm going to try, for example, this card here. Let's add here a version two to the course. For example, let's click save and the request went through correctly. If we scroll down, we are going to see that indeed the title was updated as expected. And now comes the more important test, which is to confirm that indeed the users that are not administrators cannot modify the data. So let's go here to our Firebase authentication tab and let's choose here a user that is a known user that is not an administrator. If we check here the student user and we click here on edit user, we're going to see via the custom claims that this user is not an administrator. So if you scroll down, you're going to see here the email and password. So let's go ahead and let's log in to our application using these credentials. I'm going to click on sign in with email. I'm going to paste the email student at angularuniversity.io and I'm going to type in here the password student. 
Let's go ahead and let's sign in. So we are now redirected to the home page as expected. We can still see here the buttons. We have not yet adapted the UI depending on the content of our custom claims. We're going to do that in our next few lessons. Right now, we just want to make sure that we cannot delete any of these courses. So let's try to delete a course. I'm going to click here on delete and we get could not delete course as expected. Permission denied. So the rules seem to be working. So what about if I access here the edit course screen and I'm going to try to modify the title. If I click on save, we are going to see that again, we get here a permission denied error. So as we can see, our Firestore security rules are working as expected. Only administrator users can edit the data, but all known users that are whitelisted in our predetermined list of users can still read the data, but not modify it. And with this, we have taken care of the most important part of our role-based access control implementation, which is the actual security of the data. We have made sure that the data is secure. Now we are going to take care of adapting the user interface to the multiple roles of the user by showing or hiding certain elements. Before doing that, though, we are going to finish our Firestore security rules section by showing how to add security rules conditions for collection group queries. This is coming right up in our next lesson.